like you're warm welcome on this Lord's Day. Uh, winter has certainly arrived. It's, 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 it's very chilly. If you're wondering why we're recording outside, well, that's because of the lighting we need. Uh, but we just trust that uh, God's word will warm your heart and it'll be a joy joyous time as we uh, join together. Let's bow heads in prayer as we commit this time to the Lord. Father, thank you for this wonderful time where we can come around your word. Father, we thank you that as we take another look at Hebrews 11, uh, the chapter of faith, Lord, that you'd stir our hearts. Father, we thank you that uh, faith begins with worship. And Lord, we ask that as we come around your word, Lord, we lift our hearts to you in worship and praise. And Lord, realize that worship isn't just singing uh, or even praying, but Lord, it's about a lifestyle that we live. We just pray now that you'd speak into our lives and we, we thank you that we can look to you again, uh, even during this time of pandemic and uh, many concerns, concerns around us. Father, we thank you that we can look to you and lift up our, our hearts in praise. We pray this all in your precious name. Amen. We're in our series, uh, Real Faith in an Unreal World. Um, and today we're going to look at the fact that uh, faith worships, uh, the first step in, in, in faith, in, in having a faith relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, is worship. And certainly God's way has been uh, a way of faith. Uh, remember last week we looked at Hebrews chapter 10 verse 38. It quotes Habakkuk 2.4 and it says there, my, my righteous will live by faith. Certainly there's been no other way in our uh, relationship uh, with the Lord. Uh, and evangelist told a story about two boys who were in hospital. Uh, their beds were side by side. Uh, one boy had a dangerous fever. Uh, the other had been struck by a truck and his body was badly mangled. The second one said to the first, Say, Willie, I was down at the Mission Sunday School and they told me about Jesus. I believe that if you ask Jesus, he will help you. They said that if we believe in him and pray to God, then when we die, he'll come and take us to heaven. Willie replied, but what if I'm asleep when he comes and I, I can't ask him? His friend said, just hold up your hand. That's what we did in Sunday school. I guess the Lord Jesus sees that. Since Willie was too weak to hold up his arm, the, the other boy just propped it up against the pillow. During the night, Willie died and when the nurse found him the next morning, his arm was still propped up against the pillow. We can be sure that the Lord saw his arm because the Lord sees faith and the Lord accepts faith. By faith, Willie saw the, the way to heaven. By faith, he, he saw that uh, what the learned will never discover on their own. God's greatest truths are discovered by, by simple faith. It's not the world's way to truth, but a, a thousand, even a, in a thousand years from now, if the Lord tarries that long, the world will still be devising and rejecting uh, God's uh, it, its theories. The person of faith knows the truth now. Faith is the only way to God. Remember Hebrews 11 and verse 6. For without faith it is impossible to please God, because those who come to Him must believe He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. Today our reading is Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 4. Just one verse as we focus on, on this great man of faith, Abel. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 4. By faith Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith he was commended as a righteous man when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith he still speaks even though he is dead. Now if you read the story about Cain and Abel in, in Genesis chapter 4, it's, it's mysterious, it's enigmatic, it's, it's even a, a, a little bit difficult to understand. Adam and Eve had two sons. Cain went into agriculture and, and Abel took up uh, shepherding. Both were religious men. And when it came to the time to worship, both brought an offering appropriate to his profession. Abel from his flock and Cain from the fields. But curiously, God accepted Abel's sacrifice, but rejected Cain's. Cain in turn became angry and, and God warned him in, in Genesis chapter 4 and, and verse 7. If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. But we see in this passage that Cain, he, he nursed his anger and he, he murdered his brother Abel, whose blood cried out to God from the ground. The, the, the story ends in a, a tragic closure in Genesis chapter 4 and verse 16. So Cain went out from the Lord's presence and 
lived in the land of Nod, east of Eden. You may be wondering, well, this is really an unusual, a strange story. What's the the real point? The great man of God, the church father, St. Augustine, he understood it and he he penetrated its meaning uh, to its very core in his famous book, The, The City of God, when he explained the following. Cain was the firstborn and belonged to the city of men. After him was born Abel, who belonged to the city of God. Augustine correctly saw that each re- uh, represented a, a radically different approach to, to religion and to God. There was the, the way of Cain, the, the way of unbelief and self-righteousness. He, he had a, a man-made religion. Jude 11, in fact, warns us, Woe to them, they have taken the way of Cain. But we see in contrast the, the way of Abel, a, a man of faith, and yet a way of faith, and it's described in, in verse 4 of our, our, our reading. By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as a, a righteous man when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, he still speaks, even though uh, he is dead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we see in Hebrews 11 and verse 4, we, we, two, we see two cities and two ways. The city of God and the city of man. The, the, the way of faith and the way of unbelief. Yeah, we see genuine faith, a, a faith that endures. Abel's faith produced three things. It produced genuine worship. It produced genuine righteousness. And it produced a, a genuine witness. We're going to see that there are are two ways to worship, there are are two ways to live, and there are are two ways to witness. Firstly, we see in this passage there are are, are two ways to worship. There's the right way, there's God's way, what we call the way of Abel, and and then there's the wrong way, the way of of Cain. Abel's genuine worship was uh, commended in in verse 4, the first part. It it says there, by faith, Abel offered a, a better sacrifice than Cain did. What made Abel's worship right before God? Well, we see in this passage that that Abel was commended for his obedience. To do a thing by faith, you you need to do it in response to a a word from God. Now, as we see in Romans chapter 10 and and verse 17, faith comes by, by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, or the word of Christ. God speaks and, and we respond to that, that word by, by faith. Can we worship God just in the, in the way we please? Well, the answer is no. Genesis chapter 4 and verse 3 to 5 uh, says, uh, tells us a story. In the course of time, Cain brought some fruits of the soil as an offering to, God, to the Lord. And Abel also brought an offering, fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry, and his face was downcast. As we we look at these verses in in Genesis chapter 4, we we, we see that there's a right place, a right time, and the right way to worship. God had given Cain and Abel explicit instructions about how they were to worship. There was a, a place to worship. Because they brought offerings, uh, some sort of altar must have been used on which to place the sacrifice. Uh, There's no mention in this passage of erecting an an altar. Perhaps there was one on the east side of the Garden of Eden where God had placed the the, the cherubim with a a flaming sword so they could not uh, re-enter the garden. The question today is, 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 do you have a, a place of worship? Now, Of course, uh, um, living this side of of the Lord Jesus Christ, we we can worship anywhere. But friend, have you uh, established a, a place of worship, a, a, a place where you, you spend time with God, where you, you, you commune with God and where you worship Him? We need to always have that place where we can go and, and there can be any place, anywhere, but we, we need to worship God. Then there was a, a right time to worship. In the course of time, uh, Genesis 4, 3 tells us, uh, it literally means at the end of a certain time. God had designated a time for worship. The fact that Cain and Abel came at the same time suggests that God had uh, uh, set a particular time. 
Well, certainly today we can worship any time. And in fact, we, uh, it's not just when we go to church. Um, we actually worship all the time as in, the, in the way we live. But friend, have you set aside a time where you can commune with God? Have you prioritized, for example, uh, Sunday, um, spending time with God's people and, and worshiping, coming together? Um, do, you, do you have a time daily where you spend time with God in prayer and, and in His Word? And as you reflect on what God is saying to you, we need to have that, that time to worship. Then we see there was a, a right way to worship. And perhaps this is the, the most important part of, of what we see in this passage. God had given express, explicit instructions that only animal sacrifices were acceptable. Very likely they had learned this from their parents, Adam and Eve, because in, in Genesis 3.21, it indicates that after Adam and Eve's sin, God provided clothes from animals, slain to clothe their nakedness, an implicit uh, inference, a, a connection that blood was to be spilled in direct response to their sin. Did not Cain and Abel understand uh, the, the substitutionary atoning nature of the blood, or, 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 or the blood sacrifice? A sin offering to, to cover their sins. Now, now those are, are, are big words, but basically uh, um, uh, Christ, and if you look forward to the New Testament, uh, the picture there is that uh, Christ died in our place. That's what substitutionary atoning means, that he, he, he took our place for the, for the punishment of sin. Hebrews 9 and verse 22 reminds us, For without the shedding of blood, there is no remission or, or no forgiveness of, of sins. And so the, the important point here is that we, we need to recognize we are sinners in need of a Savior. It certainly isn't popular today to, to preach about sin, and, and many uh, even avoid it. Preachers avoid the, the, the issue of sin. But yeah, we see that uh, perhaps Cain refused to acknowledge the, the, his sin and the fact he was a, a sinner before God. Abel offered a, a blood sacrifice for sin, one lamb for one man. Later, if you remember, moving forward to uh, Moses when he led the people out of, of, of bondage in Egypt, we, we see the, the Passover, and here we see one lamb for one family. Then came the Day of Atonement where uh, uh, the high priest would enter the tabernacle, uh, the Holy of Holies, and, and he'd offer a sacrifice. And, and here we see one lamb for one nation. Finally, we move on to the New Testament and, and to Good Friday, and there we see one lamb for the whole world, the, the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, who, who died for the, the sins of the world. There was nothing intrinsically wrong with a, a grain or a fruit offering. The law of Moses, in fact, included such, such offerings, but, but the blood offering was, was always first, because only blood can, can deal with sin. And that's probably why uh, Cain uh, did not acknowledge his personal sin. Here is where the, the life of faith begins. Worship, uh, we worship as, as sinners in, in need of, of God's forgiveness. And, and friends, this is really significant as we look at this issue of, of worship and faith. The difference between Cain and Abel, Abel gave God what God wanted, whereas Cain gave God what, what he, Cain, wanted to give. What we learn from this is we, we can't just worship in, in the way we feel like. Abel was obedient. Cain was disobedient. Abel came by grace. He, he recognized God's grace in his life. Cain came by works or what he could do and what he wanted to bring. Abel acknowledged his sin where, where, as Cain refused to do that. Abel approached God and said, Lord, this is what you said you wanted. You promised that if I brought it, you would forgive my sin. I believe you, God. I acknowledge my sin. And I acknowledge your remedy. Here it is. Cain had the same understanding about God and, and how he was uh, meant to worship, but he, he worshipped in his own way. In the tradition of his parents, he, he did his own thing. Cain must have believed in God, otherwise he would never have brought an offering in the first place. He recognized who, who God was, but he, he did not obey God. How many of us are, are maybe falling into that category? We, we know that God exists. We, we believe that God exists, and, and yet we refuse to obey, obey Him even in worship. He believed in God, but he did not believe what God had said. False religion is coming to God in, in any other way than God has prescribed. 
I can approach God on the basis of my own works, who I am. Or we can approach God on, on the strength of, of His grace uh, in my life. Consider the following verses. Acts chapter 4 and verse 12, that, that wonderful verse about uh, our being saved. Salvation is found in, in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. In other words, what, what, the, what, what the writer of Acts is telling us is there's only one way to, to have a relationship with God, and that is through Jesus Christ. There's only one way. Proverbs chapter 14 and, and verse 12 reminds us, there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Friends, there's, there's only one way to worship. There's only one way to, to have a relationship with God, and that's God's way. Imagine for a moment that you, you go to your doctor, you, you get a, a serious diagnosis, and, and then the, the doctor says, well, friend, you do what you please. You, you treat yourself like you want to. Well, that's exactly what happens when we uh, worship God in, in the way that we please. Cain's sacrifice was a, a monument to pride and, and self-righteousness. Here we see the, the way of Cain. Abel, on the other hand, believed and obeyed God. This was the way of Cain and the way of Abel. Abel is commended for his obedience. He's commended for, for having the, the right heart attitude. When God rejected Cain's offering, Cain, uh, Genesis 4, 5 tells us, he, he was very angry. He, his face was downcast. Here we see just how, how shallow his devotion to, to God really uh, was. Look again with me at Genesis chapter 4 and verse 6 and 7. Then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. Now, God's plea was met with a, a silence. Whereas Cain's mother Eve was talked into sin, Cain could not be talked out of sin. Cain determined to stay angry and uh, uh, he almost liked staying, uh, being mad. So it has been with Cain's descendants, his children, ever since. But Abel came with a different spirit and look again at Genesis chapter 4 and verse 4. And Abel brought an offering fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering. Abel bought of his best. And certainly we, as we worship, we, we need to bring to God of our best. Listen to the words of Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 9 and 10. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with your first fruits of your crops, then your barns will be full to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new, new wine. How do you worship? And during this time of, of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, how do you worship? Are you hoarding everything that you have and, and giving the leftovers to God? Or, or do you give your, your first and your, your best to God? God saw Abel's heart and was Pleased with his motives for, for 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 7 tells us that God loves a, a cheerful giver. God desires devoted hearts in, in his worshippers. And, and Jesus said in, in, in John chapter 4 and verse 23 and 24, that, that well-known uh, verse, Yet a time is coming and has now come when true worshippers will worship the Father in, in spirit and truth, for they are the kind of worshippers that, that the Father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshippers must worship in spirit and in truth. We really need to reflect on that verse, that, that God is coming, that we really uh, asking us and, and telling us to, to worship from our hearts with, you know, in all sincerity and, and truth. The psalmist recognized that God is uh, looking for the right spirit. Psalm 108 one says, my, my heart is steadfast, O God. I will sing and make music with all my soul. It's certainly very significant that uh, in this great chapter of faith, faith begins with worship. Let me say it again, it's so important. Faith begins with worship. 
Isn't it so significant that, that the author uh, who wrote to the Hebrews chose this example of faith as, as the very first step in his, in his discussion and, and his witness about uh, the life of faith? When we come to Abram later on, we, we're going to see that everywhere where Abram went, he, he built an altar to worship God. He knew that faith and service grow out of authentic worship. And so we see there are, are two ways to worship. There's the way of Cain, God's way, and the way of Abel, man's way. But secondly, we see there are two ways to live. Having taught us about worship, the, the author shows us there are, are, are not only two ways to worship, but there's also two ways to live. He shows us that there is a genuine way of, of worship, the, the righteousness of Abel, and there's uh, not a genuine way of worship would we, we see in the life of Cain. Hebrews 11 verse 4 uh, um, it says the following, and remember we, we read those verses, By faith Abel bought a, a better offering than Cain did. And, and then the, the author continues, by faith, he was commended as a righteous man when God spoke well of his offerings. Perhaps you have wondered how God showed his favor to, to Abel. Uh, Jewish and Christian tradition uh, say that fire came down from heaven and consumed uh, Abel's sacrifice, but that wasn't so with Cain's sacrifice. We'll, we'll never know if this actually happened, uh, but uh, th that's the tradition in Jewish uh, um, a tradition and a scripture records certainly that fire descended on, on the sacrifices of at least uh, uh, five other instances. We read about Elijah and, and Gideon and fire on the rock, fire on the altar, Leviticus 9, 2 Chronicles 7. We, we read about Manoah's sacrifice. But with Cain, God is strangely silent. However, it was, we don't know exactly. God spoke well of Abel's offering and he was commended as a righteous man. In Matthew 23 verse 35, Jesus calls him righteous Abel. And in John, in, in John the, the apostle wrote in 1 John 3 and, and verse 12, he emphasized the, the life of faith by, by contrasting Cain's evil actions with Abel's righteous actions. Here's the connection. Authentic faith produces authentic worship that produces righteous living. Let me say it again. It's, it's so important that we understand this. Authentic faith produces authentic worship of God that produces righteous living. James chapter 2 and, and verse 17 says, In the same way, faith, if not accompanied by action, is dead. Now, of course, James is speaking about righteous living. Faith produces true worship, and that produces righteous living. To put it another way, worship impacts the, the way you live. Your faith, your worship impacts the way you live. And so we see that there are, are two ways of worship, and there are, are two ways of living. And, and then finally, thirdly, uh, we see also two types of witness. Finally, we see that authentic faith produces a, a authentic worship. In verse 4, the, the third part, and it's, it carries on and it says the following. Genesis, uh, Hebrews chapter 4. And by faith, Abel still speaks, even though he is dead. Among William Blake's most fi famous paintings is, is one depicting Abel. In the background lies Abel's muscular body, pale grey in death. In the foreground of this, this painting, we uh, flees Cain. He, his body is moving away as he, he sprints by, but his torso is, is, is twisted back so that he, he faces the observer. His eyes are, are wide in, in terror. His mouth gaping in, in, wretch, in, in, in wretching agony. And his hands are stopping up his ears in, in, in the attempt to shut out the wail of his brother's blood screaming from the ground. In Genesis, we see Abel's blood crying for retribution. But here in, in the letter to the Hebrews, it is Abel's illustrious example of, of faith that sweetly calls to us to a profound witness. And by faith, he still speaks even though he is dead. Certainly there's a, a great power in example. 
St. Francis once called to one of his young monks, let's go down to the, the town to preach. The novice delighted at being singled out to be the companion of, of Francis of Assisi, he, he quickly obeyed. They passed through the principal streets, turned down many of the byways and alleys, made their way out of, uh, of some of the suburbs, and at length uh, returned by wind, the winding route to the monastery gate. As they approached, this, approached the, the gate, the monastery gate, the, the younger man reminded Francis of his original intention. You have forgotten, Father, he said, that we went down to the town to preach. My son, Francis replied, we have preached. We were preaching while we were walking. We have been seen by many. Our behavior has been closely watched. It was thus that we preached our morning sermon. It is of no use, my son, to walk anywhere to preach unless we preach everywhere as we walk. This could genuinely be said of, of Abel. Though none of his words have been preserved, he has been eloquently preaching for thousands and thousands of years about authentic faith. How has the Lord spoken to you today? Do you have authentic faith that produces authentic worship? By faith, Abel offered a, a better sacrifice than, than Cain did. It was better because it was obedient to, to God's revealed will. This tells us that we, we did not bring anything to God and, until we approach Him through the blood of, of Jesus Christ. Nothing in my hand I bring, simply to the cross the cross I cling, says that amazing hymn. And when we worship, in whatever form that may take, uh, do we bring our, our first and best, or, or do we withhold from God? Do we worship from our hearts in, in, in spirit and, and truth, to use the, the words of the, the Gospel of John? Second, authentic faith produces genuine righteousness. By faith he was commended as a righteous man when God spoke well of his offerings. Certainly, Abel walked the talk. His authentic faith produced genuine worship, which resulted in a, in a righteous life. And, and friends, as you look at your own life, uh, are you expressing genuine faith in, in the way you live? And then finally, in application uh, third, we, we see that authentic faith produces a genuine witness. And that for eternity. By faith, he, he still speaks, even though... He is dead. Friend, what is your witness as you reflect on this passage? It's a, an amazing passage. And, and remember that the, the first stop of our journey of faith is to, is to truly worship God. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, we thank you for this great saint, Abel, who uh, genuinely worshipped you. Father, we thank you for his worship. We, we thank you for his commitment to you. Lord, we thank you that uh, he expressed his his faith in worship. Father, you expressed his, his faith in, in living and, and witness. And oh God, as we reflect in, in these difficult days where all of us are challenged, uh, Lord, where uh, we face so many uh, things around us that are difficult in life, Father, I pray that you'd remind us that we, we need to express ourselves uh, in this journey in faith, firstly with, with true worship. Lord, help us to focus on who you are. Lord, help us to, to look to you. Lord, we we, we come as sinners uh, and acknowledge our sinfulness and our need of you, our, our need of your grace. And, and Lord, we know it's on that basis that we, we worship you. Father, that we come and we, we lift our hands in, in worship because of your grace in our lives. Lord, we pray that uh, this word would speak into our lives. And, and, and Father, we, we know that your spirit speaks to each of us directly and, and, and challenges us about things that are happening in our lives. Father, won't you minister to us right now uh, by your spirit? As we bowed, won't you just take a few moments to reflect what, what God is saying to you? What, what, what word has the Lord, uh, what, what word is he, he speaking to your life? Won't you just reflect on that for a few moments? And, and maybe if you need to confess sin or you need to make right, won't you do that right now as we, we simply bow before the Lord and, and ask him by his grace to, to forgive us and cleanse us and, and to direct us on the right path? Father, on this day of worship, we, we know that you are worthy to be worshipped. Lord, we thank you for your work of grace in our lives.
Father, we know that apart from you, we could never ever uh, be forgiven of sin and have a, a relationship, a real relationship with you. And so, Father, we, we, we end this time with a, a time of worship, just uh, recognizing who you are, your character, your grace, your, your goodness. Father, the fact that you are in control of our lives. And Lord, we just pray that uh, we would uh, always recognize that you are the king upon the throne. Lord, that you are in control. Lord, that you, your presence is with us uh, throughout our day. And Lord, you are, are certainly worthy to be worshipped. We give you praise. Amen. The Lord bless you. It's certainly been a joy uh, at this time to share with you. And we, we just pray that the Lord would use you, uh, this word uh, to grow your faith and, and uh, to allow you to, to live in the way that the Lord Jesus wants you to. God bless you.